Hello and welcome to the Tudor's Back 6, episode 22. I'm Matthew Bonson. And I'm Barbara Mead. And today we're going to be talking about uh, self esteem amongst uh, people with dyspraxia, uh, or sometimes the, uh, the lack thereof, uh, sadly. I, I think it's probably fair to say, if not nice to say, that a lot of people with dyspraxia have experienced low self esteem at, uh, at least some point in their life. And I know Barbara and I both said before we started recording, actually, in rehearsal, that, that both of us. Um, experienced it quite early on, didn't we? Yeah, very much so. Yeah. But when was your when was the time you experienced it most, would you say? Oh my goodness, um, yes. I think probably teenage years. Um, what was it, so most of it school? Or? In, yeah, school days, teenage years, um, because I found that what happened was, certainly in school, it was really, really, um, well, humiliating, I suppose. Yes. You go through the humi- humiliation of the dreaded PE, where you take ages to get changed and you're singled out that way and, and nobody wants to pick you for their team. I was just going to say, last week it's the team every and time. Then, but then you have that cooking from the board you know, when, you're, um, when you're in these theory type lessons and all that kind of thing. And then lunchtime comes and there's not even any let up from that because it used to take me ages to eat my food and still does take me a while actually. But um, what would happen very often would be everybody around me, yeah, there were chairs up on tables because everyone else had finished and they were all outside and I was still struggling through mine. So the word that used to be applied to me a lot was slow, which was excruciating. Mm-hmm. You know, you're so slow, you know, you're slow when you do this and you're slow when you do that. And it's funny, on the, on the school lunch run, I used to hate that, so I used to be the complete opposite of that and I used to, I, I still can't do a bit now, I try and stop myself, but I used to completely wolf my food down as quickly as possible. It just meant making an absolute mess, which nine times out of ten I did, I made a mess everywhere, just because I wanted to be one of the first ones to finish my food, so that I wasn't labelled as slow, so that I was able to then kind of go out quickly. It meant that half my food was usually around me on the floor, on the table, on the chair, down my front, wherever, but at least, at least I'd eaten most of it, <laughs> obviously a fair proportion I could go outside. Yeah, don't you, don't you find though that all of those kind of experiences where we felt, we felt bad about ourselves was because yeah. of outside influences. Yeah. Because there was an obvious imbalance between the way we felt, or certainly, now I need to talk from my own point of view, yeah. I can't speak for all dyspraxia, I can't speak for you either, but, uh, but the way I felt was, um, I felt that I had these capabilities that I just couldn't seem to get out there, and, and the more people told me I was slow, stupid, lazy, you know, lazy Stop was another, yeah, I did, just started to believe it, and started to feel quite worthless. Mm. And um, particularly as a teenager, I was very, very self-conscious. So my self-esteem was really low then. Um, It has changed. It's changed. I'm not totally sure if there was a um, a sort of pivotal moment when it changed, but um, it certainly has because nowadays I'm, I would say, very confident. I know what my capabilities are. I know what my limitations are. And so I work within those boundaries. And I still push myself. Yeah, it doesn't mean that I can afford to rest on my lord because if there's something I really want to do, I'll do it. It's as simple as that. You know, if it's if it's hard for me to do or it takes me a long time to do it, I'll still do it anyway. So I would say self esteem issues for me are a thing of the past. Mm. Um, but there I'm sure there are people who are going through that now and I can remember very, very vividly how it feels. Um, so because you had similar sort of problems Oh you, God, yeah, I mean experience. Uh, in my teenage years, early twenties, yeah, hugely so. Just being, uh, this is just my language of it, but it's feeling like you're being beaten down uh, a lot of the time because you know it's, it's just it's, well, very similar to me to you at school, just just not being able to keep up. I know mean, there's different expectations I think on on kind of boys and girls in school. That's a certainly a conversation for another day, and it, you, you know that's a whole different kind of set of issues, but. You know, you know, as, as a boy, if you're not being um, sporty and you know quite uh, active, um, anyway, you're in, you immediately kind of singled out for some that suspicion. Um, and, and I wasn't sporty. Uh, school. I'm still, I'm 32. I'm still not that particularly sporty um, because I've got no interest in the subject. Whereas now, actually, that doesn't bother me. I'm not sporty. So what? I like to read, and write, and do other stuff. That's my forte, and that doesn't make me any less of a bloke. Uh, of, of a man, just because I have different interests and this stereotyped image, um, 
but, but I think the, the dyspraxia side certainly didn't help um, because again it was the self-doubt well why are my classmates able to do that why are they able to run on a pitch uh, at a faster pace than me is it just because I'm unfit is it my asthma is it my dyspraxia um, you know, why are they able to copy down from a board quicker well that's not due to my asthma that's not due to you know anything else what is it what, why am I so different why am I so slow and wrong? Um, I think the hard thing as well is you know how much effort you put in. Oh, yeah. You put loads of effort in, but the results just don't seem yeah. to be the same as everybody else's. And, and so, what seems so natural for other people, yeah. you know, that's something I used to find weird. Really, it's so natural for people. I, I struggle with that kind of, you know, the, 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 the social stuff, you know, like making new friends in a new school or in a new workplace or... Whatever, and and it's funny, you know. I think about it. I'm th- I, okay, I'm 32 as we record this, and I'll be 33 soon. But I can still remember how I felt back then, vividly. You know, having this low self-esteem, this embarrassment, this shame, almost. Yeah, it's just. Uh, you know. I think the problem is we tend to, although we know that we have certain capabilities, or we believe we have certain capabilities, and we know that we can do what we want to do, I think there's an element of that, because that's really inside us, but we tend to start defining ourselves in terms of what other people, um, you know, suppositions that other people yeah. have about our capabilities, which um, I know that we've, we've already said this in other videos, but um, it is something that just doesn't go away. Um, the only change that can be made is the change that you make for yourself, and the change that I make for myself, because... There are ways of dealing with low self-esteem and to help you to feel good about yourself. And I have to, I, mean, I don't want to feel like a, um, as though I'm just pushing advertising on everybody because I'm not. But I'm a hypnotherapist and hypnotherapy is incredibly powerful um, to help raise self-esteem and raise confidence and get rid of anxiety or at least reduce anxiety to a manageable level. And um, But the reason I'm saying that is not because hypnotherapy magic or anything like that. It can't make you do anything that you that you don't really want to do and you're not committed to. So the way it works is that um, you can you need to make up your mind on a conscious level that you are going to do your very best to feel good about yourself, to reflect the way you really are inside, you know, and take that from your own um, views of yourself and not from other people's. So you can do that, but hypnotherapy makes it easy for you to do that once you've made up your mind and that's what you're going to do. And um, there are some very, very simple techniques that you can use with or without hypnotherapy. And um, I do tend to bring this into every hypnotherapy session I conduct because I'm totally sold on it. It's such a simple thing to do, which really helps. And that is, if you feel anxious, if you feel stressful, if you feel anything that's negative, basically, the moment you notice that creeping just take a deep breath, allow yourself to exhale fully, because as you exhale fully, so you automatically relax. The important thing to remember is that you cannot physically be relaxed and anxious at the same time. It's not possible. You can either have one or the other. You can't have both of them coexisting. So instead of pushing away the feeling of anxiety, the feeling of worthlessness, or however it may manifest itself, don't give that any attention at all. Just focus your attention on how brilliant it feels, that moment of relaxation as you're exhaling. And it feels really nice. It feels good to relax like that. And even if it just lasts for a moment, you can do it again. Take another deep breath because you're breathing all the time anyway. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, it's something that you can do. And I think the important thing to remember is that while you are relaxing and focusing your attention on that relaxation, cannot be anxious, you cannot feel stress or worthlessness, it simply cannot happen. So by doing so you can then congratulate yourself because you have chosen relaxation over all that negative stuff. You've chosen it. So by choosing that you have taken back some control of your life because you deserve to be in control of your life. There isn't a single person on this earth who is more important than you are. You are every bit as important as anybody else and so if you just remember that use that breathing exercise it really works 
And that's just a little small thing that you can do that can make a positive change. It's a start. And then small steps. If you find that um, that you need to take these deep breaths fairly frequently, then that's fine. Just do that because the more you do it, the more you exercise that control, the easier it's going to get, the more natural it becomes. That means, are, are you, do you do you like Skype consultations? I do actually, yes. I, I was just thinking yeah. if, if anyone's also interested in kind of having more of a conversation with Barbara about it and perhaps booking a session of hypnotherapy. It can be done by Skype, right. certainly. So it's just something you think, don't, don't feel that because obviously, you know, Bob and I both, both live in Kent, but we want our reach as it were, message to kind of reach further than those boundaries. If you if, if something actually wanted to think, oh, actually, do you know what, this might help me, Bob is not limited by geography in that yeah. sense. I, I'm not her agent uh, <laughs> on this as well. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm very mindful of the fact that I don't want this to be just a massive advertisement for venial hypnotherapy because that's not really what I'm saying. But but what I am trying to get across is that hypnotherapy, provided it's um, handled responsibly, is very, very powerful and it can make a massive difference. So that, um, well, for example, I always aim for complete success in one session. So it means that after one session of hypnotherapy, you can feel better about yourself. You can see yourself as you truly are, which is your natural state is to be relaxed and focused and in control. That's how you naturally so all the other stuff, I won't use the word I did earlier on, but yes. all the other no. stuff that comes flying in that you don't need, you can get rid of. You can take control, with or without hypnotherapy, because if you use that breathing technique, and remember that it's physically impossible to be relaxed and anxious or um, having low self-worth at the same time. They simply cannot coexist. So you can choose one or the other. And you have, you have the power to do that. The power all comes from you. I think that is that is kind of quite a strong message, and I, which which I completely agree with. It's 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 actually you may feel like the power has been taken away from you in a certain circumstance, or the control has been taken away from you. Actually, no. Um, it may be hard to find sometimes, but but, but you have the ability to say no. Yes, um, so you can say yes yes in some circumstances, but you you have the ability to say no. It may be hard, it may be difficult, but when that happens, of course, you're not alone. You may feel like you are, but you're not. There are people out there who understand, who get where you're coming from. You know, there are other dyspraxic people out there. Um, you know, it may surprise you to learn that Barbara and I are both dyspraxic. Um, we've not we've mentioned it before, but in fact, we are. We've mentioned it once or twice. Maybe a couple of times in the, in the pilot episode, but apart from that, <laughs> we've, we've kept it quiet, <laughs> I think. Um, yeah, of course. Um, but, but we get it. You know, we, 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 you know, because, and I do because I've been there. You know, I've felt that way. I've experienced that. So I don't presume to know everyone's personal issues, but I have experienced life. We know how it feels. feels. Yeah. We know how it feels, and um, which I think is a great gift, to be honest with you. Because, yeah. You know, you get to a certain stage where, for me, self low self esteem is not an issue now. It really no. isn't. Oh. Because I'm quite happy to say, well, no, I don't do that. I'm choosing not to do that, yeah. or you know, I do something else. Oh, instead I mean, tw- 20 years ago, in my te- in my teens, I'm I'm I'll be unrecognisable to, to yeah. what, who, who, the person I am now. Yeah, you know, I was very introverted, very shy, just not not the person I am. And and it was it was one of those gradual processes of acceptance, accepting. Well, okay, accepting dyspraxia into my life as as it's something that I can't get rid of. So how do I deal with it? How do I manage it? How, how does it become something that I control rather than how does it continue to be something that controls me, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, it being a, 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 a capture of excuse or a title for things. It's not. You know, just because we're distracted doesn't mean we can't do other things. If you watch the last couple of episodes we've done, we've talked about that in quite some depth. Um, I don't pretend it's easy. I don't tell you it happens overnight. But as you begin to see that Actually, you're stronger than any one part of your life. It does help. Trust me. <laughs> it's um, definitely about taking back control, isn't it? Yeah. And knowing that you're taking back control and feeling good about it. So that's why it's important to congratulate yourself because you are in control of your life. Nobody else is, unless you allow them to be. You have the power. To exercise. You can play. 
claim it back. Why should you? It's your life. Claim oh, it back. Obviously, it's, um, you have the powers from. Um, oh no, I have the power. That's from uh, He Man. Sorry. That's <laughs> he Man and Masters of the Universe. He Man. Yeah, no, I have the power. <laughs> Sorry, that's completely off deck. What we're talking oh, about. I apologise, yeah, but yeah. Um, I was a huge fan of that. Okay. Anyway. Sorry about that, that's a divergence. <laughs> but I completely echo what Barbara was saying. <laughs> so, on that is there bombshell, anything we need to add? I don't think so. I think that's completely comprehensive. I say, but Barbara is available for Skype consultations. Yep, uh, please. I mean, I, I really don't want to push the hypnotherapy. Well, I, I wouldn't push hypnotherapy on anybody because you really have to make up your mind that you're going to make that change and you need to be determined to do that. But then hypnotherapy makes it so much easier. And you will come out of it feeling a lot better and a lot more empowered. So that's what it's all about, about being empowered. But you are the one that makes the change. Nobody else does that. What she said. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't put it there myself. So on that bombshell, um, here end this uh, episode 22. Indeed. Um, thank you for watching. Um, look forward to hearing from you. Hope to hear some of your comments underneath uh, or on Twitter or Facebook. Uh, all the usual places. Interact, we love it. Interact, we, we love a chat, as you can tell. We love a chat. Thank you for watching, and see you again soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.